But to break through all of the fluff and the noise and the talking in the space and actually get to doing, we focused on three objectives. Our first objective was to uh, establish an embed NetBank into global uh, tech communities. The second one was to establish experimentation and commercialization capability. And the third one was to plug into global venture capital deal flow. So effectively what myself and my team do, so we're strategic, analytical, and technical, is focus on identifying top 100 disruptors globally around that core thesis every six months, um, along strategic imperatives that we identify for the organization that we want to accelerate. We then identify 12 collaborations across the group, so retail, business banking, wealth and insurance, corporate investment banking. And we progress six of those through to experimentation inside of corporate investment banking. I'll give you an example now. And if we find something that we can validate in terms of creating client value or delight, uh, we then accelerate it through to commercialization. Some clever people started working through this mechanism, and that was sort of the first part of the journey of, of, of the innovation and, and being creative. And then it gets passed on to the product team in San Francisco, which is the real genius guys who sit there and build out the user interface, and they will um, build the, the actual product, the cash collection mechanism in the app itself. Um, and then it comes down to the operational team. And I think because we made so much noise, they were like, here we go, guys, go implement. And that is really where things get exciting. So we actually launched it in, in Durban um, two weeks ago. And it's a smaller market, so we needed to stress test it. Because you can only test things so much in a controlled environment. And sometimes you just got to you know, roll it out and see what happens. But the thesis behind it was that they have a staff complement of 5,000 and a sales force of 500. And the thinking was, how do, we make, how do we move from a sales force of 500 to a sales force of 5,000? And so we created a platform called Power of X, and it was on your mobile phone. And so if, you were, if I was at watching the rugby at Nick's house and you were saying, you know, I'm really struggling with my data center, my payroll services or whatever it is, I could show him a video. If he likes it, I could log a lead. And on Monday, hopefully someone phones you and it turns into business and I get commission from it. And so you can start to run your own kind of little bu uh, business within a business, but you're driving sales and you're kind of driving to the ov overall vision of the company. So I think it's an example that's slightly different to some of the examples here in the sense that it wasn't outside of it like necessarily growing and breaking new ground, but really sort of optimizing the resources that you have within an organization and driving that. And it proved to be very successful until Telcom came in. <laughs> shut it down. But <laughs> that's for a different panel discussion <laughs> altogether. Um, where our innovation uh, can take place um, and, and where we can redefine our roles as, as lawyers and in particular litigation lawyers is to think about our relationship, uh, is to think about how to, um, to add value to not only a particular case or not only a particular legal question, um, but to add value to an organization which is an entrepreneurial or an innovative organization. And, and, and that is where I think um, legal innovation uh, is going to take place. And I think that is how uh, hopefully I can sit on this panel in, in, in 50 years' time and, and, and talk about um, our experiences and, and having survived uh, all that time. Yes. Just one, one reference point that's, that's really great in South African law, which we have examined to pieces over the re recent years at this crammer, um, is obviously the Makate first Vodacom judgment and w what happens when someone within your organization has got really amazing ideas. Are they going to come to you? Um, are, they do, are they the structures in place um, in, in terms of your, your labor agreements, in terms of your organizational policies that, that are really facilitating people to, 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 to really innovate within their roles and try to grow something exciting within the organization rather than than stepping away and, and starting something co competing with you.